got an update. Julie, this is going to impact a lot of people this morning as we wait to find out exactly what is unfolding here. Yes, indeed. Uh, I can tell you right now that 295 remains open. So for those traveling from the Capitol Beltway headed inbound towards uh, the Anacostia Bridges, 295 is open. What we have learned is that there is a portion of South Capitol Street that is blocked off between M and I Street, also a portion of 11th Street that is blocked off as you approach Virginia Avenue. So again, this is what we're dealing with. The closures are in place. South Capitol Street, again, from M to I Street in Southeast and 11th Street from M to Virginia. That's what remains closed off at this point. Now, we are told that traffic is still able to get across the 11th Street Bridge as well as the Douglas Bridge at this time, but we are keeping a close eye on that because that very well could change. But this is definitely going to impact the commute and tie up that drive, especially with all of the activity that's there for folks traveling to Southeast Washington. They can clearly see what's going on, and of course, that's going to cause those slowdowns. So if you can, you may want to just stick with Kenilworth Avenue, depending on where your travels take you. If you're coming inbound, you may want to just bail off early, use New York Avenue as a workaround. But I can tell you right now, the area in Southeast Washington, those Anacostia bridges, you want to avoid this area until further notice. If you recall, unfortunately, last time around, there was a huge closure point that was affecting the drive. So again, if you have to travel into D.C. this morning, start thinking about those alternative routes and avoid Southeast Washington if you can. Brianne? All right, Julie, you? stay with us for that. We'll continue to get updates from you on those closures as we see more of those in place. Meanwhile, we want to get right over to our Sam Sweeney. He has made his way to the scene. Sam, describe for us what you're seeing. Marie, this is a massive police presence. I'm talking hundreds, if not thousands of law enforcement officers right now descending on the Naval Yard. Take a look behind me. You can see these officers are showing up in their personal vehicles, in their work vehicles, marked and unmarked. They are going in with tactical gear. They are wearing their, their vests, their helmets, and they have just swarmed this area. There is also staging areas around the uh, Naval Yard right now. Back all, all along M Street, we have fire trucks, we have ambulances, SWAT vehicles, motorcycles, SUVs, you name it, all hands on deck right here at the Naval Yard. Now, right now, I can confirm that National Park Police do believe that there is an active shooter inside the building. They do have the helicopter up. But once again, this area is completely surrounded and shut down. We are going to stay out here, and we'll have an update within the next 10 minutes. Reporting live near the Naval Yard, I'm Sam Sweeney. News Channel 8. Sam, I know that you just got down there. Great job getting there so fast. I know that you're still working to gather uh, more information. Some people on social media um, have been reporting, other journalists on social media have been reporting that the gates to the Navy Yard have been shut and locked. Do you know anything about that? Are, are you able to see from your vantage point if that is in fact the case? Is this compound on lockdown right now? Any indication on that? Well, we are being held right now at Fifth Street and N. And this is uh, it's just completely blocked off. They're not letting us go anywhere. And there are people out of their office buildings, people coming out of their homes. I mean, the streets here are filled with people, but we cannot get close enough to the Naval Yard to see exactly what is happening right in front of it. So we are working to find out new details. But again, a very active scene down here. And uh, it's going to continue to develop over the next uh, hour and the next day. Yeah. Sam, quick question for you. While you're there on the scene, this would obviously be a time where people would be coming into work there. A number of, of not only the Navy Yard, but federal buildings down there in that area along M Street. Are you seeing people trying to arrive to work, just seeing this, just hearing this? What can you tell us about about number of people trying to get where they may need to go and, and this being blocked off as a result? Brian, from what I can see here, nobody's trying to go anywhere. They are just simply watching what's going on as dozens and dozens of emergency vehicles, yeah. unmarked and marked, continue to come down. Where our photographer is going to get off the, uh, is going to pan over, and you can see as they come down M Street right now, they, it's just coming and coming nonstop. Uh, and they keep filling the area. But right now, only the streets here at 5th and M are blocked off from our vantage point right now as they make this perimeter. The helicopter flies over. But again, a nonstop stream of these emergency vehicles headed in towards the Navy Yard right now. I mean, if I had to estimate, I can see from my vantage point right now two to 300 law enforcement vehicles. A massive, massive presence. And the people, as you said, coming into work right now, not going into their office. They are just simply staying on the corner right now, trying to figure out what's going on, just as we are. You know, this is unfolding by the minute here. And, you know, a lot of the law enforcement officers on the scene right here, they don't know what's going on. So it, it's developing, and uh, we're going to continue to stay on top of this.
Okay, Sam, thank you so much. Continue to stay right there, gather some more. We'll check back in with you. If you are just joining us this morning, 8.05 on this Thursday morning, we are following this breaking news right now here on News Channel 8 with reports of a shooting at the Navy Yard. This, of course, as we are seeing these live pictures of hundreds of police, and you can still hear those sirens in the background, responding there outside of the Navy Yard. We understand D.C. police, Capitol police, Park police, all there on the scene responding to this. And of course, this brings back the memories of what happened there back in September of 2013. Right, when Aaron Alexis, that lone gunman, stormed the Navy Yard, he killed 12 people, uh, injured three others. You know, we were just talking about this scene. It almost gives you chills because we watched the exact same thing unfold uh, back in 2013. Uh, we want to get over to Dave Lucas. He's in the newsroom. He's been on top of this since the reports first started coming in. And Dave, uh, is it safe to say that we still are following with the you know confirmation that police are responding to reports of a shooting we do not have confirmation of an active shooter and also Dave have you heard anything about the in fact this compound is in fact on lockdown very difficult to get any definitive word as you might imagine right now because the focus is whatever is going on inside those gates we do understand that the the area is at the very least Can tightly I secured whether it's locked down can't say officially just because we have no official word on all this what we do know is the first call came in about 7:40 this morning and at that point everything else started to become very difficult to pin down I think it's important for us to put some context on all that as we watch these uh, arriving officers starting to put on their tactical gear here. All of this comes in the wake of a nationwide alert that went out from the Justice Department. 18,000 police departments across the country were warned, be on high alert for the time around the 4th of July. Not for any specific we were told, but because there was the sort of rise in chatter, a rise in chatter that uh, mirrored what happened in Tunisia after that deadly ISIS attack there. Again, we can't make an infinite link. It's worth noting, though, that all this comes against that backdrop. Uh, this is a very alarming, very uh, worrisome situation that we're confronting. Uh, as Sam Sweeney told us, the number of emergency uh, arriving officers just continues to, to multiply. They are marshalling tremendous resources in the area. This, of course, uh, just that, that horrible reminder of what happened back in of, of 2013 when Aaron Alexis went to the Nav C building, that was building 197. And injured three up.